production of electromagnetic waves by an antenna. So, uh, in order to create electromagnetic waves, what do we actually need? So, here is the list of Maxwell equations, Gauss law, Gauss law in magnetism, Faraday's law, and maxwell Ampere law. Now, looking at the first Maxwell equation, which is telling us that a charge enclosed by a closed surface will create an electric flux, the stationary charges will create an electric field. However, uh, stationary charges do not create a magnetic field, so that will not be enough to produce electromagnetic waves. On the other hand, looking at equation number four, steady DC currents uh, enclosed by a surface will be producing a magnetic field. So this is the path integral of the uh, magnetic field. Uh, however, if you have a steady DC current, that means there is no uh, net charge enclosed by the surface at any time. That means the electric field will be zero. So uh, these steady DC currents and stationary charges cannot produce electromagnetic waves. So what do we need to produce electromagnetic waves? We need a time-dependent current. So why is that? Because if you have a time-dependent current, not only you produce a magnetic field, you have a time-varying magnetic flux, and that will be creating an electric field component as well. So uh, having time-dependent current means you have accelerating charged particles. So accelerating charged particles uh, emit electromagnetic waves. Okay, so that's the requirement to produce or generate electromagnetic waves. Now let's see an example of an antenna that uh, transmits electromagnetic waves. This is called a half wave antenna. It consists of uh, two metal electrodes and here we have an AC oscillator voltage AC source that is connected in between these two electrodes. So what happens here is that the voltage oscillator forces charges up and down. So we have periodically the top metal and the bottom metal electrode having charges plus minus and uh, plus minus like this. So this will alternate between the two electrodes. The Charge separation resembles a dipole, so it's like having plus Q minus Q separated by a distance 2D, as you can see here. So this half-wave antenna is also known as a dipole antenna, because we have a dipole being produced. Now, uh, looking at the electric field and magnetic field components created by this uh, charge distribution, uh, we can see that... Uh, because of this plus and minus charges here, you can see electric field lines uh, flowing this way. And uh, because of the current, uh, we have magnetic field using the right hand rule. If you point your thumb in the direction of current, your fingers will curl into the page on the right side and out of the page on the left side. Uh, the magnetic field will be perpendicular uh, to the electric field component. And we will see that electric field and magnetic field are 90 degrees out of phase in time. So uh, why is that? When we have a max, when we reach a maximum charge uh, accumulated on the top electrode and the bottom electrode, that is the point where we have zero current. So maximum electric field will develop when you have zero magnetic field, and when the charges. Uh, are maximum at the two ends we see this maximum electric field and zero magnetic field and also when we have the uh, no net charge between the two at that instant we have the maximum current that will correspond to maximum magnetic field so electric field and B in magnetic fields are components are 90 degree out of phase in time now, how is this electromagnetic wave propagating? You can see that the field lines are uh, propagating uh, in the direction of S, so that's radially outward, basically, from the uh, source. Now, if you look at the uh, behavior of this electromagnetic radiation, it falls off as 1 over R cube far away from the antenna. And why is that? Uh, if you look at your dipole, with a distance 2D in between them, 
the electric field due to the minus q points towards minus q e minus and electric field due to plus q points in this direction and we have the same angle theta uh, when this is uh, this axis x axis is placed uh, right in between in the middle so the total electric field x components will cancel but y components will add up so this is basically looking at the electric field right in the middle here all right so the electric field due to these charges will be kq over uh, the distance uh, squared so we have a radial distance r from the center a distance d from the origin therefore the distance between plus q and this uh, point p of interest will be a uh, square root of d square plus r square so we have using pythagorean theorem square root of d square plus r square so kq over d square plus r square will be the electric field and we have two of the same uh, with a sine theta they will add up so the y components will add up so 2 t kq d square plus r square sine theta what is sine theta it is d over square root d square plus r square for distances much greater than this charge separation distance 2d we will have d square negligible compared to r square r square multiplied by square root r square gives us this one over r cube dependence on the other hand the electric dipole moment q to dj hat points from minus q to plus q uh, this is our uh, electric dipole moment vector that points from uh, minus q to plus q uh, and it's it has a magnitude um, basically q one of the charges multiplied by the distance uh, between them 2d so q 2d in j hat direction therefore we see that this is k times p over r cube uh, so that's basically the uh, magnitude of the electric field so it the electromagnetic radiation falls off as one over r cube far away from the antenna that's correct now at great distances electric field is induced due to time dependent magnetic field and magnetic field is induced due to time dependent electric field and these fields are in phase and die off as 1 over r now we know that the electric field varies as 1 over r cube at greater distances therefore the electric flux uh, 1 over r cube times 4 pi r square assuming that we have a spherical wave front for radially outward fields they vary as 1 over r so the magnetic field is uh, proportional to uh, the, the rate of change of electric flux which will be uh, de dt and de dt varies as 1 over r so you can see that um, at great distances e induced due to b of t b induced due to e of t and they die off as 1 over r so basically the, we look at the uh, change of the electric flux and magnetic flux at greater distances and we we see this uh, 1 over r behavior for these induced electric and magnetic field components that are in phase now the uh, magnitude of the pointing vector the power per perpendicular area is basically proportional to e times p so you can see that because of these one over r's we have one over r squared dependence for r much greater than d uh, and the this intensity is proportional to sine squared theta over r squared well intensity is proportional to one over r squared because of the one over r dependence for these in phase uh, induced electric and magnetic fields at greater distances at the same time you can see that when theta is equal to zero that is uh, you are in, within the uh, metal electrode uh, the magnetic field is zero and we see that the magnetic field is maximum uh, when we go to an angle uh, of 90 de degrees so that b back sine theta is the uh, magnetic field similarly uh, we have electric field uh, varying as e max uh, sine theta electric field is also going to be uh, maximum uh, right here because it will have um, 
all the y components adding up so you will see that uh, because of the sine theta sine theta dependences of b and e fields their product also vary as sine square theta so sine square theta over r square is the intensity dependence on the angle with respect to the central y-axis and uh, the distance r from the center now, as a receiving antenna, the response is maximum when the antenna is placed parallel to the electric field and zero when it is placed perpendicular to the electric field. So we have to put it parallel to the uh, electric field to get the maximum response. And where is this actually used? If you look at the TV antenna, this is basically an array of dipole antennas, as you can see here. And why do you have to uh, change the angle uh, in order to get the maximum, uh, uh, in order to maximize the signal that we receive when, when this is connected to a TV because we're trying to uh, align the uh, antenna axis parallel to the electric field axis to get the uh, maximum uh, response. Okay. All right. So, uh, we talked about the condition to generate electromagnetic fields, uh, electromagnetic waves. We see that electromagnetic waves can only be generated if we have a time-dependent current, and that means you have accelerating charged particles. This is what we find using Maxwell's equations number 3 and 4, Faraday's law and Maxwell Am uh, Ampere law. And we talked about the half-wave antenna, the distance between the top and bottom uh, boundaries of this antenna is equal to lambda over 2 in this case. Um, we have a voltage oscillator that is connected in between the two electrodes which creates a dipole that's oscillating in time. The electric field and magnetic field components close to the antenna are 90 degrees out of phase. The pointing vector points radially outward. Um, far away from the uh, from a dipole, we know that the electric field drops off as 1 over r cube. Uh, but because of this electric field dropping, uh, dropping as 1 over r cube, we have an electric flux that is time dependent that varies as 1 over r at these greater distances, which produce an in phase magnetic field that varies as 1 over r. And electric field and magnetic field components, uh, we, as you can see here, uh, are maximum when theta is equal to. Uh, zero for, uh, for when are zero when theta is equal to zero for mag magnetic field and theta is equal to 19 magnetic field is maximum and because of this in phase relationship at these greater distances electric field also the induced electric field also has the same dependence on the angle theta therefore the product of the induced electric and magnetic fields vary as sine square theta over r square creating the intensity profile at great distances and as a receiving antenna the response is maximum when the antenna axis is parallel to the electric field and zero when it is perpendicular to the electric field this uh, finds an application as a tv antenna where we have an array of these uh, dipole antennas